we're having a break free through Jesus service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And do you believe that God's going to break through? Amen. He's going to break through. Amen. But God laid on my heart, there are certain things for us to do in order for God to break through. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You see, if you want a cup of tea, you can't just sit down and pray and say, God, I need a cup of tea. God, I need a cup of tea. The tea won't come to you. Amen. Amen. You have to get up, yeah. put the kettle on, yeah. put the sugar or the, or the tea, or get the milk prepared, the sugar and the tea bag ready or the coffee, depending on what you want. And you have to make sure it's being prepared. Too many times in Christendom, we are sitting back saying, God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to do that. And God is laid on my heart to remind you that we have to do something. That's why I love the word that Sister Abby gave. But we have to press. We have to press. I know you're tired sometimes, but we have to press. I know you don't feel like it sometimes, but we have to press. Amen. We're living in an age where the Bible already prophesied where people love pleasure than the things of God. Now, if there was pleasure happening, everybody will be there. Have you not seen how full the football pitches are? Yes. And the cricket grounds. Have you not seen it? Yes. But the minute you say, Jesus, everybody just gets switched off. I'm not interested in that. Amen. But we're here to proclaim Jesus. The undiluted Jesus. We're not going to bring another Jesus to you. We are bringing the real Jesus. The one who came, sent by his father, and who died on the cross and rose again. Because if Jesus did not raise from the dead, this preaching, this coming to church would be in vain. Now the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58... Verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen, God is speaking here, to loose bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go, what? Free, and that ye break every yoke. Every yoke is broken. Now, let me explain what a yoke is. A yoke is something that an animal has around his neck. And it's tied to another animal. So if one animal's going left, the other animal has to follow him. But they can't go separate ways. So he's tied to the yoke. But Jesus is saying, I can break the yoke. And so therefore, every yoke will be broken today. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, verse 2, it says, As a bird wandering and as a swallow that flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Now, that sounds a bit mysterious, but I'll explain what it means. It means when someone curses you as a child of God, hallelujah, so they may say, you're not going to come to nothing. I hate you. I decide that. You know, they can curse you because people think cursing is more than that. If I speak a negative word against you, it's a curse. Amen. Now, look what the Bible says. When anybody does that to a child of God without no grounds, amen, the Bible says that it will not come to pass. Oh, come on. Are you hearing me? It will not come to pass. Amen. But the Lord laid on my heart that we can allow gates to be opened into our spiritual house that sometimes the curse comes in. So a curse is wanting something negative to happen to somebody. But a blessing is wanting something positive to happen to somebody. Amen. So as Christians, we say, God bless you. 
And sometimes we take that for granted, you know. We don't understand how powerful it is when we shake somebody's hand and say, may God bless you. Amen. The Bible tells us to bless our enemies. That's what the Bible said. So let me just clear something up before I go into the parts that I want to go into. Exodus chapter 34 verse 7. It says, keeping mercy for a thousand, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. This is God talking. Now listen to this. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. So God said at the beginning that the iniquity of the fathers would pass down to the son or to the children. And then also not just to the second generation, but to the third and fourth generation. But listen to this now in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 29. It says, God now spoke to Jeremiah and said, In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. Let me explain that. So God says, I'm going to change it that if the father eats a sour grape, it won't affect the children. Are you following it? Come on, follow me, follow me. Amen. Verse 30, and it goes on to say, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. So it's no longer passed down. Every man that eat of the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. He will get the, 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 the outcome of what he's done. Verse 31. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new, say new covenant. Now the word covenant means testimony or will. A will. So God says, listen, I know what I said in Exodus 34, verse 7, but I'm going to bring you now a new covenant in those days, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and brought them out of Egypt. Which covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. So God says, um, the covenant that I gave to Moses about the third and fourth generation, God says, I'm going to make a new covenant. Oh, can I talk to somebody? Amen. So those who feel they're under a curse, if you're in Christ, you're no longer under a curse. Praise God. Let's continue. I want you to follow this. But this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. Hallelujah. This is powerful. So now, let's jump forward into Hebrews chapter Eight, verse 7. Now, so remember, God spoke to Moses, are you following me? And says, the curse shall follow the third and fourth generation. But then God spoke to Jeremiah and said, no, only those who commit that sin will have to pay for it for themselves. Okay? Now, in Hebrews chapter uh, 8 verse 7 it says for if the first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought for the second for finding fault with them he said behold the days cometh saith the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah so now Paul is quoting what Jeremiah said come on church just follow me amen not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, that's with Moses and the days of old, amen, in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. 
Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Can you go to the last verse, please, of that chapter? Okay. He saith, a new covenant he hath made, the first old, that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Brethren, are you getting this? This is deep stuff. So, so many people are saying they're on the generational curse. Amen. You cannot be on the generational curse if you're in Christ. It can influence your life, but it can't overtake your life and curse you. So if your great, great, great grandparent did some witchcraft or did whatever, it doesn't mean it will follow you. Because when you're in Christ, behold, you're a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I don't know about you, but I'm a new creature. I don't know what happened in my ancestors' lives, but I know that Jesus has washed me and has cleansed me and now no curse from my family can follow me. Now, if I open the gate... What do I mean by that? If I sin, then, that, then it can come and influence my life. Are you understanding? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I thank you. So I wanted to explain this before I went into the main thing, what I want to talk about. And by the way, that's why Jesus, on the Last Supper, said, a new covenant I make with you. Amen. And this covenant is not in goat's blood or in sheep's blood, but it's with my own blood. Oh, hallelujah. So Jesus picked up what Jeremiah said because God spoke to Jeremiah. And Jesus said, I'm making a new covenant. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, in my blood. So Jesus' death brought in the new covenant. And we have now just read that the old covenant has vanished away. Oh, hallelujah. Beyonce, the singer, is doing so many rituals because she believes she gets power and strength from her ancestors. Come on. Christians don't deal with those things. Because the minute you believe it, and you accept it, it comes in and it influences your life. Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about break free through Jesus. Amen. Now, let me show you something. There are two types of bewitching. Let me give you the first one. Acts chapter 8, verses 9 to 12. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time... In the same city, you sorcery and bewitched the people in Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one. <laughs> to whom that they all gave heed, from the least to the great, he's saying, this man is the great power of God. <laughs> he was a sorcerer. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want to catch this vision. Amen. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. But if you open up the gate, those curses can influence your life. Amen. We're going to keep the door shut today and break free through Jesus. Amen. Verse 11. And to him, listen to this. <laughs> They had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. I'm going to read one more verse 12. But they believed Philip preaching. Philip went into town and started to preach the things concerning the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus Christ. 
they were baptized both men and women the first type of bewitching oh glory hallelujah is the greek word existimai say existimai this word i want to listen to what it means it means to throw out of position it means to displace it means to amaze or to astonish or to throw into wonder. It means to be astounded. Now listen to this one. It means to be put out of one's mind and to become insane. So when Simon came and was bewitching the city with his sorcery, it means he was causing people to be displaced. Oh, I feel like I want to preach right now. I want to preach right now. Hallelujah. Some of you may feel out of place, displaced. What am I doing here? What's happening? You don't know if it's the influence of a bewitching, but I'm here to tell you today, in the name of Jesus, God sent me with a message. And the message is, you're going to break free through Jesus. So that word, bewitch, is existomai, which means to throw out a place, to displace somebody. There are so many people feeling that they're out of place right now. That they don't know what to do right now. Come on, I need some Holy Ghost people. To, I need some Holy Ghost people to understand what I'm saying here. They have been thrown out of place. Amen. Because they have been bewitched. This sounds like an old-fashioned preaching, doesn't it? Do you know if you preach some of these preachings these days, people laugh at you and say, you know, those things don't exist. Let me tell you something. Right now, there's a film that was released in 2020. It was called The Craft. It was called The Craft. And they got actors who understood about being a witch. And what they did before every scene, listen to me, this is what the world is doing. Before every scene, Reverend, they got some real witches in and says can you anoint and put a spell on this scene so that people will be captivated and love it and then what happens the, the, i'm not making it up this is true amen it's called bewitch throw somebody out of mind and what happens is that when they did this we as the viewers now watch it and we think, wow, there's going to be some cleaning up today, you know, and some breakthrough today. Amen. But I've come with good news at the end. Amen. Don't be disheartened. I've come with good news at the end. Amen. Because God comes with encouragement. Amen. With edification and with comfort. Amen. So I won't just preach and end it there. I've got some good news. That's the first type of bewitching. Let me show you the second time. The second one is in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Oh foolish Galatian, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently sent forth, crucified among you. Now, this bewitched is separate from the first one, which is existomai. This one is called baskeno. Say baskeno. And it means to speak ill of somebody. Oh, hallelujah. It means to slander somebody. Do you know when somebody slanders you, they're bewitching you? Amen. Hallelujah. So baskano means to bring evil on one by feigning praise. So bring evil to somebody by pretending to like them. Are you understanding it? This, listen, if you, if you want to check it out, check it out. In front of your face, they are pretending to love you. But deep down in 
their heart to love you, but they don't love you. Amen. That's a type of bewitching. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Another explanation for Bascano is an evil eye. What does that mean? You're looking at them, but you're wishing them bad. No wonder David said, if it had been somebody who was not acquainted to me, I could have understood it. But it was my own brethren, my own brother, my own sister, who sat down with me to have something to eat and ate together. We shared good communion, but they wanted to kill David. My God. My God. Sometimes who we think is our enemy is not our enemy. <laughs> and sometimes you think the one who's your good friend, they're the very one who's your enemy. Because it's Bascano. It means they feign praise. Are you understanding, brethren? Amen. 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 May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open to know who to tell your secret and who not to tell your secret who to rub shoulder with and who not to rub shoulder with may your eyes be open <laughs> in Jesus name can I just say something else the host be just dropping my spirit be careful who you eat and drink from the Holy Spirit has been teaching me this he's been teaching me this not any and anybody you can eat and drink from. There was a young prophet who did great miracles. And he, even the king's hand was restored. And God told the young prophet, don't eat or drink in this place. But there's an older prophet who said, no man. An angel told me that you must come and eat with me and dine with me. So because he said that, and he was an older prophet, the young prophet went and he ate and drank. Do you know where the young prophet messed up? Listen very carefully. The young prophet messed up because God told him not to eat. Amen. And drink at that place. The young prophet messed up when he heard all the prophet and believed it. That's why you got to be careful who is counseling you. Because if I counsel you wrong, you're going down the wrong road. Amen. Can I preach to somebody? Can I preach? Can I preach? Be careful who you're listening to. Amen. Be careful who you're listening to. Because they may have good intention, but give you the wrong counsel. Hallelujah. Yes, I know we can sanctify the food. But listen to me tell you something. My God, God's been teaching me something. Yes, we can sanctify the food. But be careful who you eat and drink from. Saith the Lord. Not everybody mean you're good. <laughs> and it's not everybody mean you're bad. But may the God who I serve... Open up your eyes. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't understand this, but the Holy Spirit told me to say, you know, sometimes we take money from people. Be careful who you're taking money from. Why am I saying this? I don't know. But all I know is that God told me to say it. Amen. We're here in a break free through Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh foolish Galatian, didn't you know that somebody was pretending to be a friend? So we must not be foolish. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. So the two types, oh God, have mercy. I want to make sure you understood that none of us are under a curse if you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. We don't need to go to ancestral family to find out if we're okay. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. You think you're speaking to ancestries. You're speaking to devils. 
I don't know who's listening on YouTube, but you think you're speaking to ancestry, but you're speaking to devils. Close the gate. Hallelujah. Keep the gate shut. Anybody who slanders you is the spirit of Bascano. Anybody. Why? Not because Bishop Pierce said it, because the Bible tells me. That's why Christians must not speak evil of anybody, because we're helping the devil do his work. If you've got nothing good to say, don't talk. Get some super glue. I'm joking, just in case. Get some spiritual super glue. <laughs> I don't want to get sued here. Amen. <laughs> Get some spiritual super glue. Now I'm going to go down to 1 Samuel chapter 15. I want to talk about rebellion and stubbornness. It says, verse 22, And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Let me give you some background quickly. Saul was told by God, go into your enemy's camp, the Amalekites. Do not take anything. But Saul said, but man, this sheep look fat. This goat look fat. These, these vessels look good. Why don't I take some of them and bring them to the house of the Lord so that it could be for the house of God? Brethren, listen again. God says not to do it. So what happens now? Samuel said, Saul, let me tell you something, Saul. Burnt offerings and sacrifice is good. God has great delight. But he prefers you to obey God's voice. Verse 23. For Samuel continues. Listen to this. For rebellion, say rebellion, is as the sin of witchcraft. Anybody who is rebellious... It's a witchcraft influence. Hello? Don't go quiet on me now. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he went on to say, stubbornness is as iniquity of idolatry. So when you're stubborn, you might as well worship other gods. That's what idolatry is, worship upon the gods. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You see how difficult it is for a, for a leader? Amen. God's telling you to do something, you know. But if it's in line with what God wants, I'm ready for it. But if it's not in line with what God told me, I can't do it. Because Saul lost his position because he feared the people. He was caught in between two. Lord, I give you praise. Not long after that, in 1 Samuel chapter 28, Saul was going into a fight. And when he went into the war... The Bible says, in fact, if you go to it first, 1 Samuel 28, verse 6. He wanted guidance from God because he didn't know what to do. But God had already rejected him for his disobedience. Amen? And Saul inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him not. Neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. God went silent on Saul. Because he disobeyed him. Do you know what Saul went and did? He went down to a place called Endor. And there was a lady there. We don't know her name. But she's known as the witch of Endor. So Saul decided, if I can just go down to the place called Endor. 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. God is speaking to me. Wait a minute. God is speaking to me. My left hand's anointed right now. Amen. I'm here to tell somebody, when you get desperate, don't get desperate to go to a witch. Saul got desperate. God wasn't talking to him. Not through dreams, through prophets, through nothing. So he decided, let me go and speak to a witch. Hallelujah. The witch pretended to bring up Samuel, because Samuel died at this time. What did these I have to teach? First Samuel chapter 28, because it's very complicated if you don't understand it. I'll teach it. Brethren, we are not to go to mediums. We are not to go to tarot card reading. In fact, I was looking, was it two weeks ago, Pastor, at a place, and it's a new age shop. Now hear me, brethren, from the Lord. I'm speaking from the Lord. If you've been going there, stop from today. I was surprised that they sell olive oil. But when you look at how it is made up, it's not right. So it looks good. It seems right. But it's not right. Listen, I, I'm here, the Bible says, to watch over the flock. Let me tell you what they sell in there. They sell in their magic candles. They sell in their crystals. They sell in their tarot cards. Spiritual books. Dream catchers. And they sell this thing called sage. Which you burn. And it's meant to cleanse the house of demons. Now, don't get me wrong. Let me explain this. There's nothing wrong with burning your incense in the house. When you get involved in these, at first, it's great. It works. Few weeks down the line, few months down the line, few years down the line, do you know what happens? It gets worse. Believe me. I'm not trying to tell you to scare you. I'm here to help you. Anything to do with new age, I stay away from it. And there's different salts and potions and soap. My God, they even have classes in the shops to show you how to do it. Brethren, come on. If Jesus can't do what you want him to do, then no other God can do it. After all this was done, Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against who? The Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not asking counsel of one that had a what? Familiar spirit. There's a something in the shops called dragon's blood. Have you heard of it? Right. Dragon's blood is actually called Damianorops Draco tree. That's what it's from. And the sap from that tree is red like blood. And the word Draco literally means dragon or serpent. Okay? And it's a substance that they take from the tree that people use either to, to, to put on their body or they cook with it or whatever. I don't know what they do with it. But it's a, to cast spells. Amen. And to my amazement, has anybody watched watch Harry Potter? You watched it? One of the main characters there is called Draco Malfoy. But let me tell you what the Bible says about this. The Bible says in Re Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 to 11, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived of the old world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. 
And I heard a loud voice saying, Now is come the salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame that dragon by the blood of the Lamb, not by the blood of the Draco tree. Oh, my God. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. If you want deliverance, it's the blood of Jesus. If you want breakthrough, the blood of Jesus. If you want healing, the blood of Jesus. If you want deliverance, the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood that flows from Emmanuel's vein. When sinners dip beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 to 12. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire. That's child sacrifice. Or that useth divination. Do you know what divination is? To discover hidden things by superstition. And words and ceremonies using water and smoke. We shouldn't be dealing with those things. Or an observer of times. That means practicing hidden arts. Or an enchanter. That's whispering. Or a serpent charmer. Or a witch. One who uses charms or spells. In fact, the definition of a witch is one who is in covenant with the devil. Verse 11. Nor a charmer. A charmer is one who pretends to know secrets of the unseen world. The word charmer literally means to bind. Nor a consulter with familiar spirits. Literally, one who consults Ob. The word Ob in Hebrew means spirits. Nor a wizard. A wizard who one who uses secrets of the unseen world to do his magic. Nor a necromancer. One who inquires of the dead. Now I'm going to give you three more scriptures and I'm closing. The first one is 2 Kings 18. Verse 1 to 6. 2 Kings 18, verse 1 to 6. Hallelujah. God is speaking to me. Hallelujah. 2 Kings 18, verse 1 to 6. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Ela, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that was right. Hezekiah did that was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, break down the images, cut down the groves, and break down in pieces the brass serpents that Moses had made. For in those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and it called Nehushtan. He trusted, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Verse 6 and last. For he clave, he kept to the Lord, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Now, look what Hezekiah's son did now. In 2 Chronicles 33, verse 1 to 13. Manasseh was 12. This was a son of Hezekiah. Manasseh was 12 years of age when he began to reign. 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did that was evil in the sight of the Lord. Like the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord have cast before the children of Israel. For he built up 
again the high places. The high places he built up, which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. High places is where they worship the devil. So uh, Hezekiah pulled it down, but his son built it up. And reared up the altars unto Balaam, devils, and made groves and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Also, he built altars in the house of the Lord. Notice, he built altars unto the devil in the house of the Lord. Whereof the Lord said in Jerusalem, my name be forever. That will be my name be forever. And he built altars for the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused the children to pass through the fire of the valley of the son of Hinnon. Also observe times. God told us not to do it. Also use enchantments. God told us not to do it. I just read it. And use witchcraft. And dealt with familiar spirits, mediums, and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Amen. And he carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God. And God had said to David, and to Solomon his son in his house and Jerusalem which he had chosen before all the tribes of Israel will put his name forever. Neither will I anymore remove the foot of Israel out of the land which I have appointed. We're going to move on from that because God's saying basically this is my house and I'm going to bless the children of Israel. But Manasseh was doing wrong. Verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. They went in the wrong way to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before Israel. So he did worse than the heathen people. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. So what did God do? Wherefore, God brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. I told you, whenever you mess around with these things, it's good at the beginning, but it gets worse. And when he was afflicted, listen to this now, he besought the Lord, his God, and he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And he prayed unto him. And he was entreated of the Lord. And he heard his supplication. And brought him again to Jerusalem. Into the kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord. He was God. So we can go far from God you know. He did worse than the heathens. But when he come back in repentance. God will hear you and forgive you and bring you back. Oh, what a God. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Hallelujah.